So we're once more looking at updates, my friends. Yes, this is the July patch for Pixel phones. It's tiny, but to soften the blow, Google's actually announced some things coming for Pixels. So yeah, let's get into it. If you want more content like this, then slap the subscribe button to get monthly recaps of all things Google Pixel and everything else in between, the fixes, the failures, and more. Cheers. Okay, so the latest OTA is rolling out with the July patch for the Pixel 6a and newer. The 6a update, I think we need to touch on this a little bit because it includes a mandatory battery update that actually enables important battery management features that will reduce battery capacity and charging performance on impacted devices after the battery reaches 400 charge cycles, according to Google. So just for anything wondering about that, 400 battery cycles is around about two years of charging most days or even every single night. So at least in theory, it should help those that are experiencing any battery degradation with their 6A. Not every 6A is affected luckily, but this is a precautionary update. So that just makes sure that everything is safe for people who are gonna use this device, maybe pick up a used one. I think we can all really appreciate that, but you can actually register if you're annoyed for a free battery replacement if you're affected or get a voucher or coupon towards a brand new phone. I'm actually not sure how much this is. I think it's about $100 or it was when I had my Pixel 4 affected by this. We're not sure how this will actually affect the overall battery life after the update is arriving on your phone for what it's worth. So I would say tread cautiously, but yeah, you want to stay secure and safe. So as we all know, lithium ion batteries all aren't made equally. So this might actually affect things like charging speed and charging times. And of course, there are some dangers by not updating to this potentially. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm just kind of giving you an overview and hopefully giving you an idea of why this update is necessary. It is almost, as I say, exact, the exact same solution to a similar problem that affected Pixel 4 owners a while back. So yeah, it is what it is. If you have a 6A and you are affected, by all means, go check that link down in the description where I've left there if you want to fill in the registration form and maybe get a free battery replacement or uh, voucher towards a new phone, as I say. So you're probably wondering why I said 6A and year. Well, there is actually no OTA for the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro and zero given reason, well, zero public reason given as to why at this stage, I'm gonna speculate that there's something that probably needs to resolve for those devices before the OTA is made available. Hopefully nothing to do with the battery. We don't know at this stage. So be sure to check out 95google.com for more information as soon as we know more. At this stage, it's a bit murky. It's hard to decipher why these things go the way they do, but we can't provide any more information. Sorry for that, but yeah, there are no patches for the 6 and 6 Pro, at least on day one. But I am sure there is probably going to be a solid reason in the coming days. The thing is, at least you're not missing too much if you have a 6 and 6 Pro. There are only two, yes, you heard me correctly, two listed fixes for Pixel phones this month. One resolves some visual bugs and issues that Pixel phones have had when you're connected to Android Auto in your vehicle with the head unit itself. So apps and the entire in-car experience should be improved after you install this OTA, especially as I say, if you have a bigger screen, it should affect that and hopefully improve the experience you may have been having before that. The only other listed fix is for Wi-Fi connectivity. With this update, it should be more stable and performance should be a little more reliable across various networks that you might access. So I have to say there's no word on the specific networks, but you tell me if you see any major boosts. I've found the Pixel 9 series to be very good on Wi-Fi, especially on a 6E router and a 6E network in my home. So there's no complaints for me, but yeah, you may have seen issues with Wi-Fi. Hopefully this is now fixed with the OTA. So as I say, there's two fixes. That's actually the, in air quotes, bulk of this, if you can even call it that, of this July 2025 patch. However, to coincide with Galaxy Unpacked, if you didn't already know that happened today, as well as the video going live, which unveiled the Flip the Fold and the Galaxy Watch series. We're getting some nice new upgrades for Pixel phones that will improve your experience day to day. Let's get the big one out of the way first. Gemini is coming to Wear OS watches from this video going live. So your Pixel watch will get Gemini hopefully in the next few hours or in the next few days. So this can and will eventually replace the Google Assistant on your wearables. It has been in the works for a few months. We've known about it. It was announced during the Android show before Google I.O. If you can even remember that far back, it feels like an age since that happened. It's not quite the full Gemini that we're probably used to on phones, tablets, and on your computer, likely due to the screen size constraints on your Pixel Watch and other Wear OS watches. But I will say it's more or less the same as I have actually been able to test this on the Galaxy Watch 8. I was very, very impressed. It's super fast. It's a lot faster than Google Assistant. It's just as solid as Gemini is in your phone. But if you want to do things like image generation, it's a little bit weird. So if you do ask it to generate an image, it won't appear on your watch, 
but you will be able to pull that image up on your phone or any video on your phone if you're using VO, if that makes sense. So yeah, I treat it like a bridge for those kind of tasks, as it were. You can do all of the basics like set reminders, call contact, get summaries of things like your emails and text messages, all the good stuff that you would, but basically now on your watch face. So that's Gemini. There is another cool thing that's coming here. There's another cool things that are related to circle to search. This is getting upgraded with some nice new capabilities. The coolest is going to be ace for gamers out there, but I'll get into that in just a sec. You may have noticed that AI overviews when you do a visual search are going to be better formatted with this update. They've been there for a little while with circle to search, at least in some regions, but this shouldn't be as hard to read from now as this update is going to fix a few things. But effectively, they're just going to be better in more situations, provide the right key information, the right information that you would be looking at. They've been a little bit hit or miss so far since being introduced. So I'm happy to see that Google are making some changes. On top of that, AI mode is now coming right to circle to search. But yeah, it's only going to be limited to the US and India where that is currently available, which is a little bit annoying. This is a new feature which will appear and let you ask complex questions with a long press of that nav bar or home button. Gemini will kick in and provide cues, but a dive deeper with AI mode option will appear at the bottom of an AI overview where you can basically initiate something close to Gemini Live, but get further context for the exact thing you're searching for. I guess it might be nice if you want to get into deeper subjects or get full details on things, but one of those things that I'm not really sure I'm going to use personally because I'd rather use Gemini Live. What's more, AI mode in Google Lens within the Google app on Android and iOS will get the same quick access. So yet more places to get into Gemini and this new AI mode. As I say, it is going to be limited to the US and India, at least for a little while. So hopefully more regions in the coming months. If you can remember Stadia had a concept feature where you were stuck and would, could potentially ask the Google Assistant how to solve a puzzle or beat a boss in a game. Well, circle to search is leveling up and going to realize that for you on mobile but with the help of Gemini itself. So basically with this update, if you're battling a boss in, for instance, Genshin Impact or whatever, you can pause or long press to bring up circle to search, draw around the enemy or the puzzle that you're stuck on, and then you'll be able to get suggested videos or guides on how to solve things or beat that boss that you're having trouble with. Honestly, I have to say, as far as updates go, I absolutely love this. Now, I think if Google could find a way to integrate this into Balatro so that I can finally get past some of those gold stakes, then I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you here. I'll be absolutely buzzing. This feature is rolling out right now and will be available in all regions where AI overviews are currently available. So not as limited. I will leave a link to the support pages so you can check which regions do have AI overviews, but I love that. I think this is something that you will help you quickly rather than having to search manually. And that's what AI specifically as, oh, as far as I'm concerned anyway, is all about. The OTA itself is rolling out right now. So if you haven't already check your phone, and let me know if you have any problems after updating. I know sometimes these OTAs can bring about problems rather than solve them. And I think it's always to get information on those things that are resolved. But until next time, yeah, cheers for watching. Hopefully this has given you an insight into what Google has been cooking up with this OTA and of course some updates for AI overviews and whatnot. But yeah, cheers for watching and I'll speak to you later.